Hello folks, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a video on um, the MG42, the M53, and the uh, the MG3 tripods. Um, it's a three-part video. Um, this uh, The first part goes on to uh, the tripods themselves, how the MG is placed in them, and uh, different positions to, to employ them at, um, as well as how to um, break them down to shipping or how you would you know move around with them and the next video will be individual uh, tripods and uh, how to mount them uh, all the major components and the smaller components as well as the optics uh, whether they have them or not um, but here we go Okay, this here is the MG42 Lafayette tripod. This is an original. This is a uh, refurbished but original 1942 dated tripod with the original sight. And uh, that is original paint on that sight. Okay. Now down here we have the date. If you can see it. There we go. 1942 with the uh, ECY uh, markings with 602 okay now this tripod is in a paint that's rep you know represents that is closest to how they were issued out um, the standard mustard yellow sand yellow however you want to call it um, it's it's basically what it would come out of the factory it was later war that they came out in green. Um, it's very rare for them to have um, uh, kind of like a fabric pads. If, you, if you've ever seen them with fabric pads they're usually done by the same um, cloth or pattern as, as their field jackets or their tents but the 90 percent, 99 percent of the time they are leather. Leather pads and usually with some kind of hair underneath, whether it be um, animal hair or human hair, the, which they're very well known to uh, to be using human hair underneath the padding. Um, these pads here, these are actually um, replaced, and they are handmade um, pads along with with the the back straps. These were actually made by the uh, the previous owner <clears throat> and uh, he made those by hand he the man who restored the tripod to its original look which is you know came out outstanding and he did the pads as well um, it does no longer have um, the the hair underneath um, it, it actually has normal foam padding okay and the slings themselves, these were handmade by the previous owner. Did a very good job on them. He's even <laughs> dated the leather. Okay. <clears throat> now, your MG42 will uh, mount through these brackets up here. The rear lugs will come here. It'll lock into place here that will lock and unlock your front lug okay an MG34 will not mount on this tripod if anybody says that they can convert this to mount an MG34 they're full of it I haven't seen it happen I have not seen any that actually work not gonna it's just not gonna work apply logic okay okay if you're wondering what this is this is like a little stud that sticks out. It'll hold your leg once you put it into a, um, a low prone position or just, you know, setting it up to be carried on your back. Okay. Major components on it. You got your front rail. Underneath here, you got your, uh, your shocks 
shock absorbers or recoil reducer however you want to call it here you've got your your optic sight these are backpack pads or the the back pads the the bottom one is adjustable this one is not you fold it up and uh, you're able to carry these on your upper back this on the small of your back hence why they're shaped this is a little bit thinner this one has more of a bulge okay your straps usually have a thicker top end thinner on the bottom these will go over your shoulders this here as for your anti-aircraft um, tube the the extension um, I'll go through the uh, setup for that um, your major parts like I said here's your top rail for your MG you got your trigger pull that is operated down here this is your spare bolt box you will keep um, an extra bolt in here and because they tend to heat up pretty good once you use them in full auto there's your main component okay here's the bread and butter of it this right here this controls the down and the up okay here's your trigger this is your oil can this is your range card and we'll get into the rest of this on the individual side okay the rest of these components we'll get into that as well for now I'm going to show you the uh, different positions to uh, to set this up okay here's one of your basic combat setups um, this is a prepared position usually um, high or dug in as you can see here your bipod on your MG is uh, pretty much deployed out that way it's not clunking up against your uh, your main frame your sling for your MG has been detached from the uh, trigger assembly okay usually sometimes you'll have ammo cans attached to your uh, leg arms as an added weight usually you'll have sandbags weighed down or another ammo canner or not whatnot here we've got two your belts loaded up ready to go with can ready to go and you have cans in reserve you have your front sights set up ready to fire for quick act for a quick acquisition and you'll use your main uh, optic sight for long-range distance fire down here you'll have your armors kit although this is a post-war you go um, the Germans would usually have a little leather pouch with you know odds and ends parts but basically the same parts are used and of course you got your spare barrels for your quick fire you need you know you put so many rounds down range you've got to change out your barrels usually between 150 to 250 rounds you'll you'll change barrels another spare barrel carrier usually is in reserve to you know uh, have it somewhere open to the air to cool and uh, yeah so this is your basic prepared position usually in a foxhole or or um, dug in okay here's uh, I figured I get this one out of the way real quick this is your anti-aircraft position setup okay this is where you would have your tube attached to that little knob right there um, your leg is set up high all the way extended your back legs are extended in line almost oh al well almost perfectly in line usually set between two and three on on uh, your back leg okay set between two or three your front side is taken off and uh, stored your back uh, range and uh, operation box has been folded up and under okay 
So pretty much this will be straight vertical up. Um, so that there is your basic uh, anti-aircraft position. This gives you a pretty good walk around. And your pole would set up pretty high to, uh, to get you a pretty good uh, um, elevation. So there you go. And here you go folks with uh, the lower position. This is usually your kneeling position. Um, here we have the same setup as before with uh, your ammo cans. You've got a few cans in reserve ready to go. Your sling's undone. Your bipod's in the same position. Your front leg is depressed quite a bit as, as well as uh, extended out. Your back legs are set between um, uh, three and four. Uh, <clears throat> your your bar spare barrel lower. Uh, pretty much everything's in with with you almost sitting um, position. R everything's real close. You still have real good control over your elevation and uh, and and uh, de elevation uh, as well as your left and right control. Um, and uh, there you go. Okay, and here you go. This is the uh, the lowest position you can get her to where you can fire straight. Um, I think this is the coolest position. Um, you really, really can get you know down from here. Okay, you uh, you're pretty much in the prone position with this. You've got your ammo cans um, set up, ready to go for uh, quick reloads as well as quickly as you can get your leg is completely extended in it's a it's a position as far uh, as far out to keep it as level as possible um, you could probably extend it up a little bit more to prop it up on a hill or or sandbags okay your legs are positioned up folded up into like uh, the the mobile position or how it would be in your backpack um, usually you can't fit anything underneath you've got two feet uh, underneath here they're like doubles this is one of the one of the positions where these come in okay um, now those those will dig in uh, they're pretty much the same as is on these legs so you got your spare barrels here and you you are pretty much laying prone on this on this guy okay so there you have it that's a German Lafayette tripod a 1942 dated and uh, that's that's the end of this this portion of this video and there she is ready to go and uh, pick everything up and move she's all folded up she weighs about 44 pounds maybe 45 or so but uh, you pick her up and she's actually pretty comfortable pretty comfortable to wear and to move around in with the back uh, back straps or w with your back pads they sit pretty comfortably and you can reposition the bottom one like I had said before um, so you, you can make it fit uh, for your preference so there she is and uh, that's it for the uh, German Lafayette tripod Okay, folks, this here is a um, Yugoslavian M53 tripod. Um, it's slightly different than the German version. These were made more during uh, 
the late end of the war or post-war, mostly in the post-war um, Yugoslavia. This one here you see she's a little more roughed up, not really any German parts in her. Uh, most of it is is uh, made post-war. And uh, let's see here. Some of your main differences are that the uh, the back pads here they're fabric covered, okay? So they 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 have a different kind of fabric. This is your usual kind that you'll see on um, a lot of fake a lot of fake tripods. Some some guys some people will take this back plate off, put on a German one. And make it look like a German, uh, original German tripod. Which any any of the uh, authentic German tripods, they'll be marked everywhere with uh, Waffen stamps. Another giveaway is this frame right here, your A-frame. The German ones are going to have more of a curve here. On on Yugoslavian ones, not so much. Okay. Um, what else? Well, we'll get more into the uh, main differences in uh, uh, in the the video devoted to this particular tripod. But like I said, this is this is mainly showing you the different set and positions for them. For uh, another dead giveaway that this is a uh, Yugoslavian or or whatnot. Most Yugoslavian tripods didn't have a sight plate. Some did, most didn't. So there, there's no plate here in the extender for the sight mount. Other than that, it's not much difference. There are a few things, but like I said, that'll come into the later video. But there you have it. The Yugoslavian M53 tripod. Lafayette copy. Now I'd probably go in with you on the same setups as the uh, German tripod, but you know it'd be kind of redundant. So I figured I'd just show this right quick on uh, the Lafayette tripod or the the M53 tripod, which is about the same as the uh, the the German one. Another setup for the high position is with the front sling off, as well as the bipod, which uh, you know if you're in a prepared position, you really don't need those on. Um, same thing, you use your cans, uh, ammo cans to kind of weigh it down. You'll have the same setup with extra ammo cans in reserve, your armor's bag, uh, spare barrels, and uh, whatever else you may need for your, you know, prepared MG position. Since this doesn't have any sights, um, sight mounts or anything like that, you're basically... Uh, relying on your iron sights and if you've already got a pre-ranged you you already know what you need to shoot at so sometimes you may not need the sights at all you're just following the uh, the direction of fire uh, you'll see where your lands or you will see where your rounds land and you'll adjust accordingly but there she is another uh, high prepared position for a foxhole bunker um, w w or whatever you'd need the tripod set up that high for. But that's it for the Yugoslavian tripod. And there she is. This is what you will we'll see most of the videos on YouTube about. The MG3 tripod. This is the ma uh, the modern standard issue tripod for MG3s for most countries that have the MG3. It's it's a very very reliable, very accurate tripod. Um, so we'll go into the same things as before. The different setups for it. Um, some of your major components slightly different than. Your Lafayette tripod, um, but you've got a lot of your 
the same components your sight, your sight mount, your back pad, your straps. But you've got some things that uh, that weren't on the uh, that are on this that aren't that were not on the tripod, the Lafayette tripod, and you've got things that are not on this one that were on the tripod. So we'll go uh, we'll go into some of those things on the uh, individual side. But this is mainly for your um, your identification or your different setups you can do and uh, and whatnot. So here we go. Okay, here's uh, your basic setup for the MG3. Um, as you'll notice on the uh, MG3 side, you've got plenty of room here between your, your bipod and uh, your rails. That wasn't quite the, the, the same thing as, as the Lafayette. So the Germans improved on that. You're, you've got one pad compared to two for, uh, for your back pads. Okay, your your bi or your uh, tripod front leg is slightly different in uh, in design. Um, now, since I don't have an MG3, your MG3 fires a 308, but of course most of you know that. The main difference between the MG3 and the MG42 is that the MG3 can use the standard belt or the disintegrating belt, like on here. Um, Another thing, you've got your sight. Down here you've got your sight box. That's where you'll have her stored out or whatnot. Here's your battery box that allows you to illuminate your uh, your reticle. Okay. Your uh, as you'll see, the uh, the gun sits more forward uh, of of your shooter uh, than on the Lafayette version. Your your butt stock is pretty much in a nice little cavity compared to before. Usually on your Yugo tripods, they take the buttstock off. Okay, but just like on the Lafayette tripod, you've got two sets of feet: one on your legs, one on your back, your A-frame. Okay, like on uh, compared to the German Lafayette tripod, you don't have a bolt box. Um, just like on uh, your Lafayette tripod, you don't, compared to the MG3, you don't have your uh, a sight box attached. Your, uh, your elevation, de-elevation uh, controls are slightly different. They're not a big and bulky one. Your trigger is slightly different. Your trigger's up here compared to the Lafayette, which is on the side. Um, but as you can see, most of the main components are, are the same. The back lug, that's slightly different than, than the original. Your trigger, slightly different than the trigger, or than on the Lafayette. Your back straps are slightly different. But, majorly, it's almost the same. But, it's just a more improved, lighter design. Compared to the Lafayette tripod, you uh, you mainly have to keep level the tripod level by eye, or if you're using the sight, the sight has two um, water levels on it. The uh, the MG3 tripod has one built into the to the A frame. That that'll get you an even steady platform. You've got a couple teeth on the front leg something to dig into for lowered position. We'll get into that here in a minute. This actually has a much better um, more a better prone position setup than the standard Lafayette tripod. But there you go for the first setup. Um, on this one you can't do an anti-aircraft setup. But you know it, it, you don't really need it. Um, usually the MG3 has its own AA setup uh, tripod. But uh, that's it for the, the main position. Here's for your second position. Um, this is more your kneeling. That's not much different than, than uh, the upper kneeling. This is more your crouch down or you've got it set up in a foxhole. Um, something like that. 
you'll see it's a little lower to the ground. Not by much, but that that's basically your your kneeling position. And uh, next we'll just show you the uh, no prone position. It's not not too bad. It's not really too bad for uh, as low as it is. Okay. And there you go for your prone position on the uh, MG3 tripod. Now, it, uh, as you can see, it's much lower to the ground um, than the Lafayette tripod. Lafayette tripod stands up a little bit higher, like the, uh, the top of the rail will probably sit about as high as this one. So, it's just slightly lower just by the length of the gun. It, it you know from bottom to top and uh, there there has it the uh, three tripods with uh, with the different position settings for them um, we'll go into the last one which is the storage or mobile position how it's how it's put all up and uh, whatnot all right and there you have it there she is in uh, in her movement position, store position, um, how backpack mode you may call. Um, so you got your one back pad here. You've got your lower pad. It's actually attached to the back of your uh, your sight box with a lower pad for you know your your lower lower back just above your box box. Um, your belt strap and then your your back straps and uh, it, it actually has a lower silhouette um, than the than the uh, 42 Lafayette or the Yugoslavian it's much lower to the ground than than either of those two and uh, I think actually one position you can shoot in is with it set up like this as a matter of fact so how about I give that one a try we'll check it out Well, unfortunately, that's a no-go. Uh, I checked it out with the frame, and uh, the uh, the trigger assembly actually bumps this uh, the front leg, uh, the front leg lock, and uh, so she she won't go in like that. But it'd be pretty cool if you could. That'd be for a quick quick uh, acquisition, not having to unfold it. Just get it in there, and uh, you're ready to shoot. But uh, yep. But that's that's the uh, MG3 tripod. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, comments always appreciated. The uh, the videos on the individual ones will come here later. Um, on at the end of this, I'll include a few pictures of each one in uh, in their perspective uh, countries, original photos, and uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, I'd appreciate if you go ahead and like, share, however you feel. And uh, again, thank you for watching.